Um, uh, yeah. And, and the police report reflects what kind of nonsense. I see, and then it was like the Super Bowl was the night before. Police accountability activists been doing this for about 10 years, and uh, I just wanted to say if. If anybody would like to write a letter to Chief Diaz, I have a meeting with him on the 13th. Um, we are going to be talking about the, the Walker case, the Williams case, and all the other cases in between that deal with police brutality and misconduct. Um, it is a shame that Mr. Williams died in this town um, the way that he did, um, and this department needs to change. So please, uh, I invite you, anybody that can hear my voice, please contact me at Facebook. I'm under anwarpeace.com, or anwarpeace, whatever it is. <laughs> um, I would love to hear about your stories about police misconduct. Um, my email address is anwar underscore peace, P-E-A-C-E, at yahoo.com. Please give me those stories. I would love to hear from the public. Thank you for your time. I have to work on my pitch again. <laughs> Right. Uh, well, right now, I, I want to tell everyone that this is only the beginning of the fight for justice for John T. Williams and all people murdered by police, and to be out on October 22nd for the National Day of Protest and come to the meeting this Sunday at Cafe Vita on Capitol Hill um, at 5.30. You understand, it's to stir the imagination instead of uh, instead of taking the imagination away. Like his his imagination was taken away. He was such a nice guy, and, uh, as, and he was uh, always curving. He was always, and, and always he was always looking out for everybody. Right. He'd always wonder, "Are you okay?" And he'd come up right. and talk to you, and he'd say, "I'm gonna make a totem pole for you." Oh, and yeah. he just was such a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, my my work. I miss never, him. Well, I've never rival his. His style was totally different than mine. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it'd be a real, I, my favorite saying is it'd be a real drag to do all the same. It would be. <laughs> it totally so, would be. And uh, just, I mean, he had he had his own style. The whole Williams family have, has their own style. And um, I'm, that's one of them that his style will be missed. He will. He was always, con he was always. It is my belief that John Williams was creating up to the moment. Yeah. He was Killed. sadly taken away. Yes. You know, yes. I, mean, I think so too. I, and he was always thinking about yeah. just talking yeah. to people and helping people and Right. Yeah. I just I just like the idea, you know, that he was just take I just it just hurts. It does hurt. But uh Thank you. Thank you very much. You're
understand why state and regional leaders are revisiting uh, that decision. Why do you think it's so important to have light rail on both I-90 and 520? You know, we, we know that um, we need a good regional transit system. Um, and we also know that in the future, um, it's likely that driving will become even less affordable. We also know that we're going to be tolling both those bridges. Um, well, at least we know 520 we're going to toll. So if you're going to toll that bridge and, you know, make it so that if you, um, in order to cross that bridge, you have to uh, be able to afford a car, afford the toll, afford the parking at the other end when you get there, it seems to me we should provide good, affordable transit options for those that, that don't have those dollars. And let me rephrase the question to you. And I, I think this is the question that we should ask other people. Why in this day and age would we build a 75 to 100 year bridge that was designed primarily for automobiles? Why would we do that? Um, why wouldn't we include transit and have a balanced approach, um, include light rail and have a balanced approach to our transportation needs? What are, what are some of the other places where the city could uh, employ leverage on the project? Uh, the EIS process, or what? Are there other points that you've identified in, as it goes forward where you have some uh, direct ability, or the city has some direct ability to control which way it, it goes? Or does you know, it go? I, I think on big regional projects, nobody, no, no one entity alone has you know that direct ability. It's, uh, um, it's, it's frankly more political. You know, it's, it requires more you know, people involved. Um, but I would say the other significant leverage point is the fact that they do have to get $2 billion more, excuse me, they do have to get $2, $2 billion more, I believe, from the legislature. And what we know is that the legislator, there are many legislators from Seattle, um, including the Speaker of the House, who, who don't think the current design is a good idea. Have you thought about if they, if the governor, if everyone kind of sways your way, have you gone as far as thinking about timetable as to when an option that you would be happy with would be completed or even begin? Our, our consultant tells us that it would take, you know, and we're just trying to say it plain. We understand that to um, have a design that could accommodate light rail would take a little more analysis. And we think that analysis could be done um, within the year. And, you know, you could move forward. In terms of actually um, putting light rail on the bridge, that, that takes longer work. Um, there's the work done to identify the routes and identify the financing and, you know, build regional support around that. You know, where does it go when it leaves the bridge at either end? Uh, and there's lots of different choices that were spelled out in the report that was done by Nelson and Nygaard. Um, so that, that would take more time. But our goal is to build the bridge in such a way that it, when you made those decisions, you could put light rail on the bridge without expensive modifications. And that could be, you know, five to ten years of planning and, and implementation of it, it takes some time, as we know from Sound Transit. You know, we voted on, for example, we voted on Sound Transit 2, and I'm on the Sound Transit board now, and we're working on the alignment through Bellevue, as an example. So those alignment decisions take some time before you get to operating, um, but, but those, we know how to do it now. I mean, we've done it, and we have light rail running to the airport, we're expanding it, um, so we know the process for doing that.